guys, Neri here from Drake Wing Gamers. If you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Far Beyond the World. So we're still having the feast, guys. It's apparently a really long sequence, so let's go ahead and jump right back into it. Please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes while entertaining you, and let's jump right in. Alarm Shen, you're up, and let's go. Alright, <clears throat> okay. What else was I supposed to do? Kiss him and show him the way next to the next burrow? Hold up, a mouse has caught on something. Damn it, mouse! What is happening here? There we go. Okay. Alrighty. The large female draws a fit of laughter from the gathered. The fucker attacked me. He thought he was good enough to take me down, and now his cracked skull decorates the northern border. I think... I think we've uh, accommodated him perfectly. Vithyr quips, and again the gathered chuckle. I don't think you... I don't think this would be a cause... Don't you think this would be a cause for reprisal? Pudgy female ignores Vithyr completely and waves the document in front of the chief's bemused muzzle. Oh, I would love for Vortigern to inquire about his missing diplomatic mission. In in person, I bet. This is serious! I'm sorry, am I missing something here? Those were foreign wolves invading our land, desecrating our forest. Isn't that what our patrol duty is meant to prevent? Has our role changed from wardens to wards while I was away? Typical brutish mindset. Audra shoves the paper back into the chief's paws, marching back to her seat. Fine. Next time I'm out in the field, I will take a picnic basket just in case we stumble against another foray. We shall serve them refreshments. Invading's a thirsty job, after all. Another round of cheers fills the ground to Aldrich's dismay, while Dran stands up, shaking his head in disbelief. No, no, no. This makes no sense. No sense at all. Why would Vertigan send ruffians to attack our bros and then arm them with letters of safe conduct? Perhaps he wants to send a message. Vithyr responds seriously. Oh, Vithyr. Perhaps he wants to send a message. Vithyr responds seriously. Previous tone of mockery gone from his voice. You know what? I think I'm going to do a Sean, a Sean Connery-esque voice for Vithyr. To whom? To us, or to our subjects. The chief shrugs, crumpling the letter and tossing it aside. I don't know, and frankly, I don't care. This demands satisfaction. Satisfaction? You sound as bloodthirsty as that mad girl. She said herself that she killed an entire pack while we suffered no losses. We lost a whole burrow along with a druid ally. Regera corrects the angry female with a bitter tone. You know damn well that other kin don't count. I know no such thing. As an alpha, I swore on the moon's her moon herself to protect all denizens of Tiernan. I notice a subtle smile appearing on Anel's otherwise peaceful muzzle, but quickly shudder in surprise as Rannick stands up. Hear, hear! He raises his mug, causing quite a few others to do the same, and I smile at my wolf. Our kin should always come first! Be it as it may, we cannot allow a ruin of a burrow to be left unanswered. The chief leans in comfortably, shaking his head in annoyance and forcing Rannick to sit down again. Do you want to, you want to start a war with our northern brethren over some bunnies? You haven't been there. The smell of burnt flesh carried on the wind. The charred skeletons of centennial trees. This was just a, this was just a raid. This wasn't just a raid. This was evil, pure and simple. Yes, war is horrible, girl. What other great insights have you to offer? Aldrich snaps dismissively and looks to the chief. Things like this happen. They've always happened. The Sylvan folk are under our protection. What is, the pr what is protection worth when others can't... Can undermine it with, imp with impunity. I think that first we need to try and resolve this diplomatically. Perhaps it's all just a misunderstanding. Dran proposes nervously. It's clear he's starting to take it slightly more seriously than Aldris does. I think I understood quite well that our lives were here were on the line. When for f when for five nights straight we were hounded by the enemy. Perhaps perhaps Galdrin had a harsh winter. The pudgy female proposes in a desperate attempt to explain this away. I mean, three times in a row our own supplies ran short. Maybe Vortigern seeks aid to replenish his granaries. I would hardly hold on par. I would hardly hold on par an armed robbery with the murder of a neighbor asking a burrow asking to borrow some turnips. Vithyr mocks her again, and once more Aldris is exposed to ridicule from the gathered. Seeing this, Dran feels compelled to rush to her defense, challenging the entire central table. You hotbloods are all the same. Clambering for combat whenever you can. 
This dumb bitch might have just as well have started a war, yet you applaud her for it. I blink as do many others, always looking intently at Regera, whose entire form tenses as she grips her hammer tightly. When you've truly been to battle. I've just been to battle, you pathetic den warmer. She snarls viciously, causing the old male to stumble over his stool. You've spent your entire life hiding behind your desk or in quill or underneath this bitch's skirt. If you ever speak to me again this way, I'll demand satisfaction in the ring. It's twice now, Dran, that you've invoked into the tribe's wolf's wrath. For a diplomat, your people's skills are somewhat lacking. I guess like everything, that's way too... That too went away with age. An awkward silence falls on the gathered, but Vithyr quickly breaks it with another quip. Perhaps he just practices this new brand of diplomacy Vortigern meddles with. He draws a reluctant, reluctant chuckle from some of the wolves while Aldris looks to her defeated friend with worry. What of Delrin? Where is he now? We couldn't look for him, as there were too many wounded among us, and we had to bring them back home. So you just left him out there alone? Dran calls out in shock, but Regera only shrugs. Rena couldn't leave us without an escort, in case more wolves were hiding within our woods. Besides, in the last report I had from the druid, Delrin's pack was headed to another burrow to leave the refugees there. He's our most experienced alpha. I'm sure that once this, his business is concluded, he will return to us as hastily as possible. He'd better do. He'd better do. The fat male grumbles as if it were a threat. Trusting a word of another kin. Aldrich sneers, joining his discontent and causing an outburst of chatter among the tables. The chief stands up and repeatedly clangs his cup like a gavel to simmer everyone down. Well, there you have it. I think it's clear we have to invoke a howl. Some of the wolves nod in agreement, but Aldris quickly puts an end to it with another shouting spree. A howl? This is absurd! Weren't you threatening me with one just the other day? He scoffs at her mockingly. If you send word out to all of our wolves, it is bound to be picked up by the neighboring tribes. It will raise questions. Good. It'll make the others think twice before violating our borders. Ithir snickers, pouring himself some more wine. I warn you, Varric, you are... Not interested in your counsel, I'm afraid. Nor your warnings, for that matter. He shrugs, regarding the, ta the gathered at our table. All I need is the support of the Alphas and the consent of one of the elders to summon the Howl. And I will... me, and I will get there. I will not leave our people paralyzed with an action by your intrigues. If you go against us, I promise you that your position... I don't give a damn about my position as well. He states plainly in a risen voice, rolling his eyes in annoyance and causing a majority of the gathered to gasp. Depose me, for all it matters. Who will you replace me with? There's not a wolf anywhere, anywhere in this forest, even if you turn every single damn stone that would stand a better chance at contesting me than Vithyr. He points to his friend, who at first is slightly surprised to be pulled into this argument, but his humor quickly returns. And I'll gladly trade places with him. He does half the ruling for me anyway. She could be my advisor for a change. The brown male proposes cheekily, and many chuckle at that remark. I would gladly accept it, my friend, just to see the look on their dumb muzzles. I'm sure it would make this little switcheroo worth their time. How dare you mock us like this? Dran growls in anger, but the chief only laughs. Mock? I'm just stating a fact here. Who do you plan to replace me with? Mithir has more popular support than any of your imaginary candidates could ever have. The two vaginas exchange surprised looks. It would seem they have found themselves at yet another impasse, and I must admit, I enjoy seeing their bewildered expression as they sit there on those undersi undersized stools like naughty children in a timeout. The chief, on the other hand, takes his adult-sized seat with satisfaction, clinking his cup with Vithyr in a triumphant toast. I suggest we let the emotions settle down before we discuss the vote further. Perhaps you should go and, go and eat something, or have a drink. I'm sure that shouting did a number on your throat. Amen to that. Oh, man. Oh. I was like, you did not just say that out loud. I mutter quietly under my breath, reaching for my cup to take a sip and causing Rannick to chuckle. I watch as Aldra squeezes her fists in annoyance, but otherwise doesn't move. We will remain where we are. Suit yourself. The chief shrugs, and the table returns to idle chatter while I finally nibble on my food. My appetite kind of went away with the garish story, but at the same time, I'm quite hungry. Despite how terrible it all has sounded, both she and Rannick look quite normal, merrily joking with friends and enjoying their meals as if nothing happened. 
Perhaps it's because they were prepared for something like this their entire life, but something tells me they're just repressing their emotions in a most unhealthy of a fashion. We stay like this for some time, with the elders watching us while watching as our revelry continues. There's an obvious celebratory mood, with Regera being almost like a guest of honor. From time to time, different wolves come by our table to clink their chalices with the towering female and pat her approvingly on the back. No wonder, she became an instant celebrity with her story. But the congratulating is limited just to her. Many cheer isn't but the congratulating isn't limited just to her. Many cheer Rannick as a savior of a sister pack. I look with pride as my wolf receives all the praise he rightfully deserves, even though he feels even though he feels rather awkward about it. It's nice to have the dinner shift to this lighter mood. Eventually, Cora shows up, rushing towards the table with a troubled expression. I'm sorry for being late. One of the young ones was teething and had trouble falling asleep. Hello, love. I've heard from V about the ordeal. Terribly sorry about all that. She scratches Rennick's chin and then nods tiredly towards Rig Rigera. But you both are safe and sound. That's all that matters. I could hear a gasp escape Rannick's throat as Cora lands merrily inside his lap, brushing her back against my shoulder. What is she doing here? Aldrich sneers, looking at the girl with a powerful disdain and clearly relieving, uh, reliving our, pat, our morning spat. I'm here because I'm here to keep our returning hero some company and congratulate him on a job well done. A tawny female response, nuzzling Rannick's cheeks soften as struggle not to get jealous again. And you will allow her at the table, but not us. Technically, she's not sitting at the table. She's not even seated on the bench. The chief shrugs, sneaking, sneaking satisfied glances at his boy. She is sitting on some wood, though, that's for sure. <laughs> Bithier pipes up, raising his cup and causing the gather to burst into laughter. <laughs> and the only one's not sharing in the amusement of this classy joke are the elders and the couple in question. Fuck me, if they had to endure this on a regular basis, no wonder they decided to, to comply with the charade. I sit to I sit next I sit next to them quietly, trying not to be jealous. This time it's much easier, not only because I like Cora, but also because I know it's not something either of them wants to do to begin with. Not to mention every now and then, Cora leans back with her entire body stretching like a cat so that she could reach my head and scratch it. It's pleasant, but at the same time gives me a front view of her cleavage and puts her entire torso on display, like a smorgasbord for Rannick to drool over. He might not want to, but I clearly see he's getting somewhat flustered, and how can I blame him? I'm also getting flushed. The way she bends her slender body does something to me on a fundamental level. How could this not entice other males? What is wrong with this tribe that a catch like this must parade herself with a flashy lure like Rannick to draw attention? None of what those wolves do makes any damn sense. I just close my eyes and lose myself in her occasional scratches. As the time passes, Cora gets more and more frisky, with her paws going up and down Rannick's torso. It almost looks like she's up the game of getting me jealous, or maybe I'm just taking it too personally. But one thing is for sure, they, or at least she, is going fully at it, as Rannick gets extremely worked up to the point even the elders notice. Shouldn't they get a room? A rather shameless display. Puppy love, what can you do? It's not like the two of you would know anything about it. Almost as if emboldened by her father, Cora giggles so theatrically that it sounds comical. Worse yet, Tama Tano gives me those self-satisfied smirks, and again, I'm getting incredibly frustrated. I watch with surprise and growing anger. She takes hold of Rennick's muzzle and dove, and dove towards his ear, whispering some sweet nothings, and then... She nibbles on it, causing Rennick to go utterly red with embarrassment. Is she fucking drunk? All right, all right, break it up, you two. The chief finally interrupts this, but he does so in a teasing manner, almost taking deep satisfaction from the spectacle. Rennick only stands up, petrified, helping the female to get on her own feet. See you later, handsome. She blows him a kiss, and he slaps her buttocks. He slaps her buttocks mechanically, allowing her to skip down away to her own table. Something's off, though. First, I thought she simply took the game too far, but Rennick's expression shows he's more concerned than turned on despite the clearly visible bulge in his crotch. I need to take a leak. He mumbles awkwardly, looking to his father, who waves his paw at him to give leave. Sure you do. <laughs> With your teases, drawing an amused snort from the chief, who waves his paw at his son. Come! Rennick nods begrudgingly and throws in my direction. I get up slightly confused, only to freeze still as the chief looks in my direction. Whatever do you need him for? I... Wolf pauses, looking back at them absentmindedly. I pissed on my ga I pissed on my Gambison once. I need him to hold it back for me. The chief and Vithir exchange confused looks, but then shrug and return to the matter at hand, while I follow the wolf, wolf behind one of the screens. Rennick leads me quite a while without saying a word, but once we're far enough away, I finally blurt out in half jest. So, you sure Cora's not into you? The wolf doesn't regard me. In fact, he increases his pace. 
Cora said someone was going to through was going through our house. Wait, wait, what? I blink, coming to a stop. She couldn't say it in the open, so she needed a reason to whisper it to me. You mean all that groping was just for show? Fuck, why am I so easily riled up? Of course, she wouldn't lie about not being in Durannic. Why am I even focusing on this nonsense when I've just been told we were burgled? And did she know who it, did she know who it was? No, she didn't. And she was rather afraid to check. If they're bold enough to raid my house, who knows what they would do to her. Do you think it's the elders, one of their goons? Might be. He shrugs worriedly, pacing in a small circle. Fuck, I've never heard of anything like this. Like what? Someone breaking into your house. It just doesn't happen. Really? I scoff in slight disbelief. It's not like they've set, they've set up here their little paradise lost. Yes, really, we're a tight... Knit community, I know. I sigh teasingly, looking at him with a gentle smile. I mean, there isn't anything at your house that is incriminating. I say with confidence, which slowly fades away. Is there? There's no additional bedding, for one. Could be that you make me sleep on the floor. He gave me a pretty condescending look as if I said something stupid. What? I'm not Dran. I have a reputation of a soft paw. A soft paw? A wolf who's extremely lenient with his wards. Trist never slept rough. I ponder for a moment and snap my fingers. I make up my bedding every day and put it away. I mean, why wouldn't I? The cottage is small. I guess. He sounds unconvinced, but my mind drifts to another matter entirely. There wasn't anything precious at the cottage, right? Like, you weren't robbed just now, were you? No, I have no. I have all my valuables on me, and you're here. So even if the cottage was burned down, nothing important would be lost. I smile involuntarily as he continues to betray his concern for me at every moment. Well, then, nothing to worry about, right? Someone just came in, looking around for some dirt and left with nothing. Hmm. He mutters, really upset by the whole debacle. Feels strange to know someone was in your house while you were away, you know. I was at your house while you were away. I tease, but he doesn't take the bait. Uninvited, I mean. Sorry, I was trying to lighten the mood. You've been through so much already that this is the last thing you need right now. I placed a hand on his shoulder. But I know what you mean. It make you feel vulnerable and almost violated. I bet those damn old-timers are behind it. Father warned me they were stirring trouble. Them and quite a few others, but I'm not about to say that out loud. He's got enough on his plate. We'll have to take a sweep of the ground once we head back. Mm-hmm. I nod in agreement as we make our way back towards the grounds when I remember our excuse from the table. Wait, shouldn't you take a leak at least? What? Why? So they can smell you've actually done it. Don't be ridiculous. No one's going to be sniffing out for my piss. He snorts in, amu in amusement, and I simply shrug. As you say, the wolf notices my confusion and decides to indulge me. We have a keen sense of smell, true, but that leads to information overload. Most of the time, your mind blocks off unnecessary information. It's only when we focus on a scent that we can harness, that we can harness the detail. Huh. I sound slightly confused, and he laughs. In other words, if you're not sniffing for something, or most importantly, don't know what you're sniffing for, you won't smell it. I narrow my brow at his obvious tone. How should I know how their senses work? But I guess it's a good piece of information to hold on to. And considering I've just done the laundry, I don't think the intruder could sniff could sniff anything of signif significance relating to me, so I sigh in relief. Alright guys, I'm gonna pause it right here. Uh-oh, got another little element of surprise thrown in there. Someone's going through Rannick's stuff! Hmm, I wonder who it is. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!